Good evening. Welcome to the Psychic Holistic Spotlight. This evening, Bill Hanna and myself, Ken Demers, will be interviewing Joe Higgins. Joe is a multi-talented person. Uh, he's a medium author, does ESP type stuff, uh, lots of different things. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about how he writes books and we'll start off with he just came back from a conference in Phoenix that was, we'll let Joe say, it's a paranormal conference and he knows the particulars better than I. Thanks. What was Phoenix? Thanks Ken for having me back on. Good to see you again, Bill. Okay, Joe. Yeah, I was attended a, a, an afterlife conference in Phoenix this past summer and it was new developments in the afterlife um, arena, meaning they took certain um, scholars and research people from around the world and had them in one place uh, to discuss what the current research is mm -hmm. in the afterlife. So it was, a, it, was a, it was a mixed crew of people. I was there presenting on receiving and understanding signs from our departed loved ones. So that was my segment. Other segments had were on um, EVP, which is electronic voice, voice phenomenon. Yes, yes. Um, another one was on um, uh, photographs and how uh, loved ones can show up in photographs and leave signs that way. Um, and so, and other people were other authors that had personal experiences. So it was very interesting to meet these people and also to meet all the attendees. Um, how many were there? Oh, they're probably, I don't know, maybe 300, three or 400. Um, so it was very interesting because you run into people from all over the world. There were people there from Korea, Scotland, uh, Brazil, and of course the United States. So it's interesting to talk to like-minded people and see what's going on um, in this, in this so-called science or investigation. Um, it's, just, it's just great fun meeting other people. Yeah, it's suppressed to such an extent in our society that to go someplace where it's a normal conversation is unique. Right, and, and all of these scholars and research people have been doing it for many, many years. They use, they're, they're very um, academic wise, they're, they're really on top of their, top of their game, so um, it wasn't any uh, fly-by-night uh, presenters. Mm -hmm. I mean, these people were the real deal. Right. Put in the time and uh, the, the, the professionals in their area in the world. So it was great sitting with these people and you know, some things that I might not understand or some things they might not understand. It's great to sit and just talk about these things. They and, did uh, presentations, but there was ample opportunity just for general conversation. That's correct. And they had, we had presentations um, all day from, from 8 o'clock in the morning till 9 or 10 o'clock at night. Um, but we did have breaks between it, and there were some times off where we had uh, time to talk among the attendees or to sure. uh, interact with the other presenters. Sure. Now, one of you, you mentioned it just briefly. One of your other skills, uh, you used, to, I, I guess you still do, the photography work where spirit would show up? I don't necessarily do that, but some other people I know do it. I thought you did it yourself. No, I don't do photography work. No. Oh, okay. A simple question. Um, I've had this happen with my photographs. And my belief is that they tend to come to people that are mediumistic, but do they also show up for just an average guy who has Absolutely. no interest in it? Absolutely, they show up in, uh, you know, most people can remember seeing or hear about orbs that show up in their photographs, but some people can actually have people, uh, deceased people show up in their photographs and it happens to people on all walks of life. You don't have to necessarily be in tune to that, uh, for that to happen. That was my question. Yeah. Well, I, the thing I find of interest from what I've read on it, we've actually had people on the show um, in the past about this, is, is the advancements in the digital realm. The technology. The digital realm, yep. not only for EVP, electronic voice patterns. Right. All right, but also for the, for the photography, it seems like it, it just cuts into a frequency that allows stuff to show up that would not show up on a the old type of film. Right. There's a woman from Brazil that's one of the top leading uh, um, uh, scientists in this field, 
and the software and stuff she uses is amazing. So they can actually tell if a photograph has been photoshopped or if, if there's a heat related to it. Right. Um, and they can take it at three dimensional and they, it's amazing how they can find out these photographs. Analyzing the photograph. Analyzing the photograph from a scientific perspective. Is this a real photograph? Is it a real person? How did it get it there? And it, it's, so it's not like uh, the politrix that they used sure. to play years ago. That's right. Where, or or you, you would question it. It's like, ah, uh, that's just part of the camera, or that's the sun. Out of curiosity. The, the software and the technology they have these days with these specific researchers is very precise. Mm -hmm. Could they, all these photographs that we have of UFOs, could they use that same technology to analyze those photographs? Well, I'm sure they have. Yeah, they probably do. I'm sure they have. It just depends on who's working on the research and the money and, and who wants the answers. Okay. That's good enough for me. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense because, um, like I said, uh, I learned a lot um, that I didn't know just in the last 10 years. Right. The advancements that people had uh, with EVP. People saying, oh, you know, you can do it at home and this and that. And the, the, the equipment they use now is so highly advanced, they really can determine um, where this voice came from. Is, is it made up of a, a human voice? Has it been tricked? Has it, you know, has, has it been altered? Has other multiple voices been pulled together? Right. I mean, they can pull stuff apart. That Let me ask you a question. We have TV shows, some of them are based in Rhode Island, that go out and record these things. Mm -hmm. What's your opinion of these? The paranormal shows? Yeah. It's a double-edged sword. I believe that the paranormal ghost chases, they bring a lot of uh, attention to the fact that certain areas have certain energies around them. Some people would call them haunted. Um, and it gets people to discuss it, which is great, because it brings it out in the open. Um, on the other hand, it seems like you have these teams of ghost hunters that are actually like, you know, competing with each other there's a lot of egos involved. Right. To be scary. It, it, to be scary and, and you know, and, and I think in certain situations they really push the envelope where the respect and the spiritual part of it is left to the door, but, you know, and it's thrown out in the case of entertainment. Entertainment, right. That's yeah, I, exactly I, what I was going to say. Is so I, 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 think I can't that, bring myself to watch them. Well, <laughs> well, I think the thing is, I think the intention is really good and in, in, in sharing the information gets people to talk about it. I think that's the good part, but once you bring it into a business like the entertainment industry, you know, things are going to get really warped. Mm -hmm. So, so it's a, you know, it's a good, yeah. the good, bad, and ugly with that. But these people, these were scientists. These people have, you know, multiple doctorates and, and all sorts of degrees um, and have been working on this stuff for a stuff long time. Stuff that you would normally never hear about. Well, the thing I find of interest, yes, but the thing I find interesting is the fact that they're able to, to do a 3D analysis of the picture where they're actually able to get the, get the depth. And, and this way, they're able to determine whether or not it's valid or not. Because if something is superimposed on it, it's just going to be flat. Right. But if it's something that was actually taken and it has substance to it, when, when they analyze it, it's almost like it's a 3D picture where they can actually see from the side exactly. that it's real. Right. Okay. And, as a po and, and its relationship to the objects around it. Right. So right. that's important. So here's the question. You're taking a 3D analysis of something that's not there. So when we're taking a digital photograph, mostly digital nowadays, I guess, all digital, that you got the background, and then in the middle, nowhere, you're having an image show up. Right. If it's really not there, how do you do a 3D analysis of it? I, I think it is there. I think that's what's actually happening. Um, right. Different you, vibration. Well, right. you can also do a measurement of the, the surrounding, uh, you know, uh, uh, environment. It could be a tree or a person standing next to it and how it works within it. Right. I, I was sent a, a photograph about a, a month ago, and I'm going to forward it to uh, the lady in Brazil. But I need some more background information from the people that had, had sent me the photograph. Mm -hmm. And it's a picture of a little girl on a raft in a pool with the mother playing with her and it was taken by the grandmother and what came out in the photograph was two little girls two twins playing on the raft with the mother the mother had lost the other twin at birth and this little girl is probably four or five years old wow so what i'm doing is that's the type that's the type of photograph that i want to give to the professionals 
that have, you know, been, you know, they know their way around a little bit more than I do. Sure. But I want background information from these people. I mean, I want, there were other shots taken in the pool at that time. There, nothing there. With nothing there or, or other activities. So we want to take pictures. I want to get those pictures to forward those to Brazil uh, so she will have a series of pictures right. where she can take, use whatever she needs to, uh, to study it right. and, and give her more, more evidence to work on it. And we'll see what happens. Six, seven years ago, when I had first bought my farm in Connecticut, I had my little trusty pocket camera, and I took a picture of the fields from the road. I walked down 100 feet, took a picture of the, the river to the north, turned around, walked on the other side, took a picture of the south. Uh, Rene's Zellweger's farm is there in, in the background, and it was kind of a foggy day, and it, I just took a picture of a foggy river. When I looked at it, when I took it into CVS, there had to be 30 or 40 people, mostly Civil War people, horses, carriages, vortex in the river. Uh, I, amazing. Well, <laughs> and the, one of the field is this ball of light out in the middle of the field. Well, I think, you know, once you start, you know, going into that particular area, I mean, there's a lot of different things that could be happening. It could be, your camera could be catching a certain uh, period in time, like a time loop. Um, where we happen, happen to have access to activity that had happened in the past, and your camera might have picked that up. Well, so there's a lot of different theories on that. It was over a river, but it was... Well, it makes sense if it was around a river. I mean, there's always been a lot of activity around rivers, um, especially in the past. Right, you know. right, right. Uh, modes of transportation is... Right, or like in Gettysburg, there's always a lot of you know, activity yeah. around a lot of the battlefields because there's a lot of traumatic things, there were a emotional, lot of people. A lot emotional. emotional. And, and with emotion, there's energy, and with sets energy. It sets an imprint. Yep, it sets an imprint, and it, they use that energy to communicate. Just like with the signs between two loved ones, um, showing up, once that connection's made, the emotion is very strong. Mm -hmm. Saying, oh my God, that's my mom, I can smell my mom's perfume. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it, your energy is just is charged. completely charged, and wow. it's changed, yeah. and it makes that sign strong, and it impression will last a lifetime. So that's what they try to do with when they send a sign. It might be a subtle sign, but when you pick it up, that whole energy changes Sure. Um, to let them know that you're, they're still around. I right. basically everybody is psychic, everybody is spiritual. It's just we don't awaken to it. So this is a, a way of awakening us. Absolutely. I mean, because of our daily lives, that's one of the reasons why they use coins. We had talked about that in a previous show. Um, it's because our attention will go immediately to that coin because it's worth a monetary value, mm -hmm. okay? We live such busy lives now, they have to use things like that because they know we can grasp it. Some people will get that, find pennies, and they'll, there'll be a patent among them, mm -hmm. and they'll say, oh, this is, you know, I'm getting a sign because I keep finding them in weird places. Other people say, oh, I found a quarter, or I found a dime or something like that, and to them, they'll miss the whole point and just think about it as the monetary value. Right, that's right. So, it, 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 but it is a way for them to grasp our attention, sure. especially in the modern world, when we're thinking about 10 things at once. Okay, let's switch subjects a little bit. Mm -hmm. You as an author, do you get signs to make you think about writing a book on a particular subject, or do you get inspiration, or do you get communication from the higher realm. I do, I do. I have certain ideas about certain books that I want to write. Um, I know when I was writing this particular book, my new book, I Got Your Message, uh, Understanding Signs from Our Deceased Loved Ones, it was supposed to be written last year. And, but instead I wrote my book on Always Connected for Veterans, Deceased Vets Give Signs from the Other Side. Mm. So vets talking to vets. And what happened was I, I felt like I was inspired to write the veterans book after reading some uh, headlines about some sure. veterans being uh, committing right. suicide, suicide right. and I just had this overwhelming feeling to write this book. So I put the book originally I was going to write, I got your message, um, and I put it on the back burner. And I, I just felt so strong, I had it in my gut, and I couldn't get rid of it for seven days to ten days. It was just like the anticipation, the excitement, everything right. was just out of control. Mm -hmm. And I knew that came from, uh, it came from spirit. And, uh, it, it just driving me to write this particular book. So everything, everything else stopped in my life, and I and I really focused on, focused that. on that book. My first book that I I, I wrote on um, understanding signs and how the whole process works. Mm -hmm. um, the name of it, Hello, yeah. Anyone, Anyone Home. home right. That that 
name actually came to me about four o'clock in the morning <laughs> when I, I woke I woke up. I sleep with a pad of paper next to my bed. Oh, okay. uh, actually, on my mattress and a pen right next to me. Good practice. Well, you know what I've done. And we've all heard about that. And th when the name came through, I wrote it right. I wrote it down right away, and I, and I mentioned it to a few people. I said, "Oh, that's a great name. You right. know, we love that." Hello, right. anyone home? So uh, that was inspired, and, and then that helped out. Some of the stuff in my newer book, when I do an outline or a table of contents, I'll ask Spirit to give me some information that needs to be brought forward, and they will actually lay out part of the book for me. Wow. And then I'll follow it. So there's certain true. things that needs to come out. Right. You, will come you, out. you had a ghostwriter. <laughs> yeah, right. I had a real ghostwriter. So, uh, but you know, I do the same thing. But what I do is I actually have a little digital recorder next to my bed. This way, I just roll over and it dreams and stuff like that. I just turn it on. I just talk into it. I turn it off and I roll back to sleep. Perfect. And 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 the nice thing about it is I'm not getting I'm not getting turning a light on. I'm not disturbing my wife or anything like this. You know, I just roll over. I just speak into it. And the thing is that when I listen to it later, it's like the whole dream comes back to me. Okay, that's all what the, I was going to say. All the subtle stuff that's yeah. behind it. Yeah, that because it's fresh. You have it all right, right there. Right. And I do use a tape recorder once in a while yeah. because it's sometimes uh, writing one of the books, I was, I was taking notes at 2 or 3 in the morning, woke up the next day, and it looks like chicken scrawl. Right. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is just too hard <laughs> to, you know, to, right. you know, to rewrite. So right. I said, I'm going to go you know, use the modern technology right. and use right. the tape recorder. Right. 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 But I still keep it there for like one sentences, two sentences, or inspiration about a certain subject sure. or a particular oh, yeah. angle yeah. Yeah. that they yeah. want yeah. covered in a book right. that I wouldn't think about. Right. Um, and they really helped out, and uh, I got your message. So it's kind of a co-collaboration with an unseen author, I guess. It's a co it's collaboration with spirit. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. divine intervention that a lot of that information comes now, through. Would it be one, indiv one individual spirit that works with you through it, or would somebody step in just for a sentence or two, or just you know? Usually, a lot of different. People? Usually, there'll be one spokesman for a particular subject. Right. When I did the veterans book, I had one spokesman, and I had a whole group of vets that were working on the book with me. So they gather the information, they give it to one spokesman, and then the spokesman gives it to me. I channel the information and it goes into the book. Otherwise, I, have, I would have too many people trying to you know, give me too Everybody much information. Talking at once. But when I did individual stories in the veterans book, the individual veterans stepped forward and it was word for word uh, their story to us uh, about their particular um, action drama. Or, or drama or experience right. in a particular uh, setting in a particular war. Uh, but usually, it, it'll be, um, I'll have one particular spokesperson uh, so that's give me the information. a form of kind mediumship? Kind of like a gatekeeper. It's like a gatekeeper. It's, it's, it's kind of a one-on-one, -on -one, but there's a group working behind. There's a group of people, um, there are all sorts of, you know, English majors, people for grandma, you know, uh, flow, all that stuff. They love, people love to help because they realize the information is coming from that side is going to help people on this side. Mm -hmm. And it's great for me because, you know, it just makes things a little bit easier if I just let it go and let the flow come through. Mm -hmm. It's a form of mediumship. Right. It's opening up. It's, some people call it automatic writing or inspirational writing. Right. Now, do you do automatic writing? I have done automatic writing. Um, is there a difference in the type of, the types of information that you get through the different mediums? Yes, the, the channeling or the automatic writing that I do now, because I have done it so often, it, it, it becomes more precise and it's easier to decipher um, without getting the wrong message. Uh, inspirational writing will be something you'll be inspired to write on some particular subject that you'll go out and do research on or something like that. It gives you the, the nest egg. And then it you gives you the nest egg, yep, or it might give you inspiration and to go into a certain direction in that book. Uh, but with this channel, uh, uh, channel writing, I'm getting exactly what they want me to say. But there are parts that I obviously I have to go out and research myself. Um, there's over 35 or 40 stories in the new book, I Got Your Message. Um, and that comes from people of all walks of life. Mm -hmm. So I have to interview them. Mm -hmm. I have to see if their stories will these, fit. These are living people. These are living people. Okay. So that people here can understand that others among us, the general public, are also experiencing these signs. And, so adding their stories is just great to read about. But I have to find out if the stories fit the particular book, if they fit 
the particular chapter that I'm working on, okay. or you know, if they fit sure. the whole genre at all, sure. Um, because you know, we so you give might it the have two hundred stories, right? But only thirty of them are going to fit. That's with correct. Your criteria, exactly. So that's that's the the perspiration and the sweat to try to organize them and put them put them with the. Uh, are people disappointed when you don't use their stories? No, not at all. Not at all. They're just happy to tell it. They love telling it. People love telling their stories right. of, of what happened to them. Sure. And uh, it's exciting. But for what, some reason, it might be. What's a short one? Oh, God, there are so many, Ken. I mean, just an example of. Well, well coins, you know, I mean, with coins, um, you know, my partner Nina, after her uh, husband had passed, um, likes to give her quarters. And she finds them all over the place. And the same thing we had talked about before, you know, you can clean, clean up the bedroom and, the, and the, you know, the blankets are nice and straight and all of a sudden there's a coin on it. Or you'll find a coin actually in a, in a perfume drawer or a coin on the, uh, on the kitchen table that we just cleaned. There's nothing on it and all of a sudden it shows up. Right. It's gotten to the point, and I had mentioned it in my first book, I got to the point and said, there's one thing about Jay, um, he's not cheap because he's sending quarters and they add up. <laughs> That's right. So uh, we get a kick out of it, and, and she has stacks of them. And I was going to say, I think I, I would put them yeah, in a jar or them? save them. I mean, you know, right. they're coming from... Divine the, sauce. Right. I mean, my, my goodness. I mean, if you have those there, I mean, that might be a, a, a good talisman where you're actually getting energy from all this. Well, it's important thing is when they send a sign like a coin or something like that, they don't want to attach anything to the actual object. Right. The reason they use the coin is because it grabs our attention. That's right. But what they want you to do is when you make that connection between the coin and your loved one, that's where the power and the energy is and that love. I got a silly mm -hmm. question for you. As where are talisman. they getting the coins? That's a, great, that's a great question, and I've asked that. The coins are, they can actually um, move them around, let's put it that way. Okay. So it might be coming out of another section of your house. It could be even another section of my house. It could be from another location. They move things around. Yeah. I behind the scenes. The, the, the ones behind the but scenes. It, I'm surprised know. they don't send socks because we're always <laughs> losing socks. But uh, well, maybe in my next book I'll ask that they question. They just had that solved last week with some great Dane. They did an x-ray of him. He had 43 oh, socks in yeah. his stomach. Oh, my goodness. But... Um, well, I have a question. What you got to ask for is gold coins. That's right, gold coins. Yeah, but it's, it's a material value then that I yeah. guarantee you if you find a gold coin, you, the person's going to 99 out of 100 times miss the whole point. That's that right. It's a sign from a loved one, and they're going to be thinking about, okay, I got the vacation. Value. I got my retirement fund. That's right, that's so right. So it's value the value they want, to, right. want you to stay away from. That's right. In, in past times, they used to use coins, and then people started to collect the coins, yeah. and they thought they had mysterious power to them. Oh, I see. Okay. So they cut back on that particular method, and they only oh, used it for people that would not use it for that particular well, thing. That's a good example when about... When is past times? Oh, hundreds of years, or maybe a thousand years ago. Let's say in the Middle Ages, someone found a coin. Some people would consider it a special, energized, mysterious, right. powerful object. And, the, and they wanted to get away from that, so they, they stopped using uh, gotcha. coins as signs as often as they had in the past, or they're doing now. Right. Okay. Hypothetically... If you had the knowledge to say what a sign would be a thousand years ago, what would it have been if it wasn't a coin? They'd use sign, uh, uh, sounds or they would use uh, other symbols around that time. Whatever was convenient and someone would recognize out from a loved place. one out of place. You know, let's say a husband passed and he was a woodworker. You know what I mean? A, a wife might find some of his tools or a special thing that he had carved, you know, in a town or a village you know, 100 miles away that shouldn't be there. You know, they, they would use something, something that's common to that area at that time. Mm -hmm. Like in the future, they might not use coins. They said they're gonna use, <laughs> they will change whatever methods they need to for that particular time or that particular environment. Mm -hmm. My brother cops, and a few years ago I was cleaning out foreclosed houses for the bank, and I go into this bank, and into this house, and here's one of his little ponies that he had coughed. I mean, it's no value. Right. Has your brother passed? No. Okay. But his carving was sitting on a, on a house. Right. So you can see how it can happen. Yeah. yeah. It was kind of yeah. neat. That yeah. So th their methods will change and alter throughout the ages.
but some of them have stuck very well, the feathers, the coins, the mm -hmm. numbers, mm -hmm. uh, smells, and things like that. Those particular signs have been throughout the ages because they're very subtle, but they're also very, very um, distinct, and they're easily to pick up. Right. Now, I have a question. I mean, we've been talking about um, the supposing that you want to and, and uh, your other books and, and what has motivated you to um, come together and, and, and come forward with these books. Getting back to the uh, symposium that you went to that had all these other people from around the world and, uh, and people attending it that had their own personal stories and, and probably connected people as well. Um, were there any other things such as like, uh, you know, the, the people have done research about those trans material rooms where uh, they're able to go into a room with a mirror and uh, a dark room or or other types of environments right. yeah. that it, are conducive to somebody being able to relax to the point where they're actually able to get messages. And right. Stuff. Yeah, there are some uh, scholars and scientists out there and doctors that are uh, have, have starting to learn um, practices of where they can put people through hypnosis, I mean, past life regression, but also to the state where they can actually make contact with a deceased loved one. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of work going on with that, um, and, and it's ongoing. You know, Dr. Gary Schwartz was out there, he did a presentation, and he has many books out, and he did research on mediums at the University of Arizona. Okay. John, uh, John Edwards was involved in that. Oh, okay. Um, so he takes it from a scientific point of view. Okay. So these guys were all uh, really trying to find out, you know, what the new methods are, and by doing so, they're debunking a lot of the skeptics. Right. Uh, some of the reasons that they've used in the past just don't hold water anymore. So it's a whole new world. Right. 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 Well, I, again, that's I, there are so many different modalities that I've heard over the over the years. I mean. Being on this show, we meet a lot of different oh, people. And we, it, we, this is this is the first night of our twenty fourth year, right? Of this right, show, right? Well, this is the type of thing that people sit around their dining room table, yeah. and can talk about for hours, hours and hours, like right, we are, right? Right? And uh, even after the show's over, yeah. or ending, we're uh, we go out to some place to have a bite to eat, and absolutely. we continue and our conversation. Can, can continue our this conversation. This is a conversation that happens at my house, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but this is how you learn, and, yeah. and we like to share it. And I'm thank, thankful that you guys invited me on the show so I could share it with the general public. Right. Well, uh, that's that's and, again and the whole reason. And get a chance to hear some of the new stuff that's going on. Right. And the fact also the ongoing investigative studies and the different types of. Um, disciplines that are actually now getting involved with actually trying to understand uh, and uh, debunking the debunkers. I mean, that's not the intent. The intent is to give validity to. That's correct. Um, but if, if we do this and, and make our discussion stronger, that's uh, right. it's, it's important. It, it helps people feel more comfortable co coming out and talking about their experiences. Right, um, right, that's right, that's very true. Yeah. Giving credit to some of the critics at a certain point in time, they might have been correct because there were a lot of shawls right. involved. Right, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Here, here's a, we've only got about a minute left, 30 seconds left. It, at that conference, was there something new and different coming down the road that we've never heard about? Actually, there was a lot of things, and we, and we really could have a whole show of, uh, on that particular subject, but the main thing that I took away from it was that the technology that they're using and the techniques that they're using right. are, uh, are so more advanced than they were even 10 years ago, let alone 30 years ago. So it's harder for like a charlatan to put over certain things mm -hmm. um, with this type of uh, research going on. Sure. I mean, there were doctors and nurses involved in medical studies about uh, in hospice situations, things right. that go on in operating rooms, right. near-death experiences, sure, sure. where oh, yeah. they have new techniques that, for drugs and stuff. Right. So it, it really is going, it's going advanced, which is great because people have had these experiences right. their whole lives or for generations, and now, you know, maybe eventually we can start to get to the bottom of it. Right. Okay, we want to thank you for coming tonight, listening to us tonight. This was Psychic Holistic Spotlight. If anyone has any suggestions, requests for shows, requests for guests, we're open. We're here. We uh, want to make it interesting for you. I'm Ken Demers, Bill Hanna, and Joe Higgins. Um, and communicate to us. 
on physical or non-physical means. We're, we're open to that. 